Now, when we originally did the Ahmed Mohammed story here uh, on the Young Turks, um, Anna mentioned uh, that some of the fear mongering against Muslims in America uh, also was done by atheists. Now, not predominantly, not by a long shot. We're atheists. We don't do that. Most atheists don't do that. But do some atheists fear monger against Muslims? In our experience, yes, and we've shown you specific instances of it. I'm not going to dive into TYT's Sam Harris debacle, so let's just look at the clip Jeng mentioned. I, I just want to put up um, the picture in the first graphic, and I don't know exactly what it is, but looking at that picture of him in handcuffs and just the look on his face, I don't. it made me really emotional, right? You are always emotional, Anna. But in this case, I do understand it. And as someone who does news, you're not supposed to admit when you're emotional about a story. I don't care. It made me emotional because that picture represents a loss of innocence. Well put. The innocence of Muslims, ironically. But seriously, I feel bad for the kid. But you look at that picture and he's a victim of the fear mongering that you're talking about right now, Cenk. Like the, the same atheists who spend all their time debating about which religion is the worst and then coming to the conclusion that Muslims are the most violent and they should be the most feared and we should put all of our attention on them. Okay, that's the kind of fear mongering that leads to an innocent 14 year old being arrested for doing a science project. Anna mentioned uh, that some of the fear mongering against Muslims in America uh, also was done by atheists. No, she made it seem like the anti-Muslim sentiment was entirely the atheists' fault. Now, not predominantly, not by a long shot. How could anybody think that was what she implied? Now, Anna, not all Muslims, not all Muslims, they sound like Donald Trump, right? It's just some Muslims, so watch out for the Muslims. Don't watch out for other people, watch out for the Muslims. I didn't say all Muslims. I'm really tired of your misrepresentation of what Sam Harris and Bill Maher have said about Islam. Even after Sam Harris spent three hours talking to you, Jenk, I'm really looking forward to the new Batman movie, though. Batman the PC Vigilante. Holy hell rain down from these uh, groups uh, saying, Oh my god, you guys are so biased against atheists. Atheists would never do anything like that. We stand with Muhammad. Yeah, exactly. I believe in the infallible doctrines of atheism and no atheist would ever say anything stupid. Those same atheists, again not a majority of the atheists, but a small group that are basically the anti-Muslim atheists have come out and said, we knew it, the kid was guilty. Guilty of building a bomb? That's really terrible. Wait a minute, I thought you said atheists would never do that. I guess I was wrong. Okay, bye, I'm the thoughtful contrarian. Like, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Wait a minute. Oh, it turns out they would, and they did. Did they? So, uh, now one of their ringleaders is Richard Dawkins, a guy who I used to previously respect. Until his peer-reviewed work in biology was debunked? He came out and said about the 14-year-old student in Texas who made a clock uh, that the authorities thought was a bomb, uh, quote, we were all fooled. Were we, Richard? Uh, so what did it turn out to be? Do you agree with Sarah Palin, who today still thinks it was a bomb? Does he? I think it's time to look at this source of yours. Bill Maher and Richard Dawkins sink to new lows. Trolling a child in the name of Islamophobia is not passion for truth. Let's say you want to be a narrow-minded bigot, but you think far too highly of yourself to be lumped in with the trucker-headed hoi polloi. I don't know what a hyola poloi is, let alone how to pronounce it. You, after all, know the meaning of hoi poloi. Oh, you do the Saturday Times crossword puzzle in ink. You're not some dumb hick. You're an arrogant troll because you're smart. That's why you love Richard Dawkins and Bill Maher, because they make having terrible ideas seem boldly intellectual. First, Bill Maher, who's already clearly stated that Islam is the motherload of bad ideas, asserted on Friday's real time that this kid deserves an apology, no doubt about it. He drew applause when he said that the clock looks exactly like a fucking bomb and demanded that someone look me in the eye right here and tell me over the last 30 years if so many young Muslim men haven't blown a lot of shit up around the world, it's been one culture that's been blowing shit up over and over again. Just a reminder, cultures don't blow shit up, extremist members of cultures do. Guns don't kill people, 
people kill people. Then full-time crabster Dawkins took time out from retreating fawning accolades from his fans on Sunday to just, no, ask some questions. I'm not going to continue reading this commentary. I've linked the article in the description box below, but you should think carefully whether you really want to generate ad revenues on that site. I clicked on it five times in the process of making this video and I feel terrible about it. At least I have Adblock Plus for YouTube. Even though the authorities, the cops and everybody else said it was a clock, we were fooled we were taken in by this 14 year old dangerous, dangerous Muslim. That's not what Richard Dawkins was implying. Even the Salon article does acknowledge that. He says, if this is true, referring to a video here on YouTube, what was his motive? Whether or not he wanted the police to arrest him, they shouldn't have done so. Oh, are you not merciful? They shouldn't have played along with his devious Muslim trick. At least you're not claiming he believes this was a real bomb anymore. I agree that he did give room to the speculation that Ahmed wanted media attention. And I think that's ridiculous. But his main concern is about the clock not actually being self-made. Assembling clock from board components is fine. Taking clock out of the case to make it look as if he built it is not. There are other reasons why a boy might take a clock out of its casing and pretend he'd made it. Trying to impress his teachers, for instance. Although his English seems good, it's possible he doesn't know the meaning of invention and he should not have been arrested. When confronted with calling him a fraud, he tweeted, I agree. We were all fooled and arresting him was wrong. Overall, Richard Dawkins was clearly against the way the authorities handled the situation. I'm not putting down the child. I'm putting down myself and the rest of us for being fooled. And the police for arresting him for nothing. If the authorities really thought it might be a bomb, why did they not evacuate the building? Casts doubt on their motive for arresting him. In summary, as a scientist, he judged the boy's work on the basis of his claim to have invented the clock. That is a bit of a dickish thing to do, considering that he is 14 years old. But Richard Dawkins did not paint him as a terrorist. Then Jenk ignores his previous attack on Dawkins and says this. We're not done yet. Dawkins has got plenty more. He says he didn't only claim to have built it. He claimed on YouTube that it was his invention. <laughs> now we're nitpicking the kid's homework assignment. Yes, that's what Richard Dawkins was doing all along. Like, oh, th some of those parts were manufactured. He didn't even make it on his own. What was he supposed to make it from? Leaves and figs and nuts that he found in the yard? <laughs> yes, some of the parts were manufactured. I don't know how you make a clock. I don't know that either. Still, this is a huge strawman. This is the video Richard Dawkins and others are referring to. And what this is, is a commercial alarm clock. All that he did was remove the plastic case from the alarm clock. Um, this is not an invention. This is not something that someone built or even assembled. But if someone had really made a clock, this circuitry here would not look like this. This transformer is for a 120 volt line. Uh, people who do maker things do not tend to use AC power because it's a bit more dangerous and there's no reason to do it. You can use batteries. These are manufactured printed circuit boards with printed circuit board circuits in them with a microcontroller in the middle. Commercial clocks tend to have nine volt battery backup and this even has the nine volt battery backup. That's the thing. This has become a huge story in the media. And rightfully so, it's a scandal that the boy got arrested. The flip side is that his claim of having invented the clock is up for debate now. I think that's a minor concern, but hey, engineering buffs may very well see that differently. Uh, Dawkins not quite sure about this young Muslim kid. He says, I don't know, possibly wanted to be arrested? Police played into his hands. Anyway, now I'm white to the White House, crowd crowdfunded, etc. As I said, I agree that this is far-fetched. However, now that he has gotten all this positive attention, I understand why some people might look at his claim to fame critically. Richard, man, maybe you should give up your seat in whatever school you're teaching at to this kid if he's that brilliant. If he's that brilliant, he shouldn't go into science but become a politician. Uh, Dawkins continues, if uh, the reassembled components did something more than the original clock, that's creative. If not, it looks like a hoax. Thank you, Richard Alex Jones Dawkins. 
you and Richard Dawkins are focusing on two completely different sides of the story. Deal with it. He continues, okay, fraudulent claiming of an invention is not heinous, and he certainly should not have been arrested by the police. Oh, some backpedaling. No backpedaling. He made that clear right from the start. These people are unbelievable. Alex Jones Infowars has this headline. Fake hate. Is Clock Kid Fuhrer all a big setup? Alex Jones is stupid. And this last guy, I can't believe he got in on the mix. This is really disappointing. Watch. That, you didn't build that. <laughs> That's funny. I'll give you that. All right, now we go on to Bill Maher. Who has already stated that Islam is the motherload of bad ideas. By the way, Salon, that was Sam Harris. And he's going to go after the kid. Very, very brave. And all these guys who go after Muslim Americans, they always think they're so bold to pick on the most persecuted minority in America. They don't. They pick on the doctrines of Islam, on Islamic fundamentalism. They acknowledge that you mustn't blame Muslim Americans for acts of terrorism. The difference between them and you is that they still allow themselves to criticize, that they don't submit to the social justice tactic of calling everything Islamophobia. Now, we did the best we can here in editing to give you full context for Bill Maher. So we took out the extraneous stuff from Mark Cuban, etc., etc. Here's Bill Maher, all of his points, good, bad, or otherwise, about Ahmed Mohammed from his program. You did, in fact, edit the clips from real time very fairly. Saved me a lot of time. I appreciate that. Watch. He's a science kid, and that's great. Can we show the clock? Okay, and the people at the school thought it might be a bomb, perhaps because it looks exactly like a fucking bomb. <laughs> And look, this kid deserves an apology, no doubt about it. They were wrong. Yes, they were. But could we have a little perspective about this? Did the teacher really do the wrong Can thing? I, yeah, but this okay. would not have happened if, if, he, if he wasn't Muslim. Controversy is precisely because of the color of his skin. See, I don't because think of so. His it's not the color of his skin. So. Yes, of course. It's not the color of his skin. And his religion. This is why the concept of Islamophobia is so problematic. Some people criticize Islam on the basis of its teachings, and rightfully so. The difference between Islam and Christianity is not a scriptural one. Both are terrible because they are ideas of morality that are really old, and they do come with all that baggage. The difference between the two religions is that there are Islamic countries in the world, theocracies where Islamic law rules and does as it pleases where people are thrown off buildings, stoned, etc., for committing crimes that we wouldn't even consider crimes. Luckily, Christianity doesn't have that power any longer. And that's why Islam is criticized more heavily than Christianity by people like Bill Maher, for the moment being, because they do criticize Christian fundamentalism whenever it raises its ugly head. Now, there are people who dislike Muslims simply for being foreigners or migrants. And that's where racism and xenophobia come in. That's bigoted. But to then turn around and equate every criticism of Islam with those people is dishonest. Applying the word Islamophobia to both groups is wrong because you paint them with the same brush. And that's the sort of distinction that Bill Maher has been arguing for. And it's frustrating to see how the progressive left doesn't seem to understand this. Excuse me, somebody look me in the eye right here and tell me, over the last 30 years, if so many Muslim, young Muslim men, and he's young, 14, mm -hmm. but that's not, not that never happened before, right. hasn't blown a lot of shit up around the world. <laughs> and if, if, and this guy, this kid deserves an apology because he wasn't one of them. But let me read what somebody said on the Daily Beast. Dean Obadiah said, uh, why would a homemade clock get him arrested, you may ask? Exactly. I just answered that question. <laughs> <laughs> because for the last 30 years, it's been one culture that has been blowing shit up over and over again. He was from Irving, Texas. He said, Irving is only 25 minutes from Garland, where they draw the Pro Pro Prophet Muhammad contest. Remember that a few mm -hmm. months yes, ago? Yes, Was attacked as it was by ISIS sympathizing gunmen in May. The message is clear, if you are a Muslim, anything you might, might do, might, anything you do might be a plot to destroy America. No, the message is you can see why they would err on the side of caution. Absolutely. Because only 25 miles away, somebody did try to kill people. 
I can't believe I agree with you. So the teacher is supposed to see something that looks like a bomb and go, oh, wait, this just might be my white privilege talking. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> He was arrested, and, and they took him off in cuffs, and then put him in a cage and burned him. Oh, no, that's yeah. ISIS who does that. No, you know, they're, they're, you know what? We, we arrested... We put a kid after school for a couple of hours. This is not the end of the world. But you know what? The end of the world does happen and, all over the world for nice millions of Muslims just, uh, who are the victims of other Muslims, of their religion. Where are the liberals on this? Okay, so let's address all those things. I'll take that last one first. Anytime the radical Muslims uh, do those things, we point it out, uh, we attack them 100%. Uh, this show uh, was pointing out what ISIS was doing well before the rest of the mainstream media. Cenk is right here. The Young Turks did and still do criticize Islamic terrorism. However, they are scared of an anti-Muslim sentiment emerging. And there have been various instances of people being attacked just for looking Muslim. I still don't agree with dancing around the issues in order to avoid these sentiments. Same thing on Boko Haram. Boko Haram means that, uh, uh, translated means against Western education. There's nothing I could despise more on this planet. Uh, education is the answer. And these kids are, these groups are trying to get kids to not get educated instead and to believe in their fundamentalist radical Islam. We're all against that. That's a no brainer. Now, in the atheist community, we all agree that Islam is wrong, as Christianity is wrong, as Judaism is wrong. We, those are all things we easily agree upon. The question is, do you then classify Muslims in a different category? We shouldn't just distrust all Muslims for those acts. I'm with him here. But the question raised by Bill Maher and Sam Harris is whether or not profiling is okay. It's not fair to the majority of Muslims, but I'm still split on whether that should be a no-go. Now, to give Bill Maher credit here, first he says, look, this kid should get an apology. And in this case, he seemed almost surprised, like, he was one of the young Muslims that weren't guilty. Well, okay, that's, there are some good ones. I agree that that's what Bill Maher implied and that it wasn't a very thoughtful way of phrasing it. But the people that have been blowing shit up all over the world for 30 years, who are they? Well, that's a funny question you asked, Bill, except you didn't really answer it, did you? Because what you do is you never count state violence. That's true. Partially, terrorism is the way the weak party chooses to wage war. I don't mean to defend it, but there are many factors. The problem with Islamic terrorism goes further than that, however. They don't only attack soldiers that have invaded their home countries. They attack civilians in those countries and in Western ones too often for artistic expression. And they are the only ones doing that on a regular basis. That's why a comedian has a bigger problem with them than he has with some Christian fundamentalist. Life of Brian got made, you know, and nobody got murdered over it. If you discount state violence, yes, what remains is guerrilla violence of the powerless. Now, it doesn't excuse the guerrilla violence, it doesn't excuse any of that. It also doesn't excuse any of our actions. But for him to say that the only people doing violence in the last 30 years are young Muslims, yeah, if you discount all the other violence in the world, that would be correct. You are talking about two very different topics here. I'm sure that some acts of Islamic terrorism wouldn't happen if the US hadn't invaded random countries. But the overall problem would still remain. Remember Salman Rushdie in 1985 and the fatwa on him long before even the first Iraq war? Another participant was the Muslim convert Yusuf Islam, formerly the singer Cat Stevens. He also supported the death sentence on Rushdie. He was asked if he would give him shelter. Yes, I'd, I'd uh, try to phone the uh, Ayatollah Khomeini and tell him exactly where this man is. Would you? Go to a demonstration where you knew that an effigy was going to be burnt? I would have hoped that it'd be the real thing, but actually, no, if it's just an effigy, I don't think I'd be that moved to go there. Look, Mar is liberal in other respects. I understand that. I understand he understands that concept. But they all laugh at the kid. Like, <laughs> like what are we supposed to do? Endanger ourselves with a dangerous Muslim kid? <laughs> like I've said a hundred times in the beginning, if you think it looks like a bomb, that's not crazy. I said that on day one. You put it aside. Maybe you evacuate the school, which they didn't do, so they didn't really think it was a bomb, right? Right. 
as Richard Dawkins wrote. Then Zheng continues ranting about the whole thing for a while and he finally wraps it up. The question is, what do you think of Muslims as human beings? So when in the past a single religion was picked out and demonized, that didn't really work out that well. You remember that? When they said, I mean, look, are you telling me that Germany doesn't have a banking problem? Are you telling me that a significant percentage of the bankers aren't Jewish? It's the Jews, stupid. How did that turn out? That didn't turn out. It's, it's viciously ugly, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And I do think that we need to be cautious and prevent that sort of thing from happening. We mustn't allow thoughtful criticism of an ideology to become mindless hatred of a minority. However, Bill Maher isn't an advocate for that. And we can't just forbid concerns like the ones he has to be uttered. There's a fine line between evaluating two risks. And I think that both you and Bill Maher aren't impartial enough when it comes to these issues. But I don't see Bill Maher, let alone Richard Dawkins or Sam Harris, as potential Wannsee conference attendees. I really try hard to be fair to TYT. I enjoy Jenks rants when it comes to issues such as political corruption and wars, but I despise them when it's about issues like this, when he's character assassinating people and misrepresenting their views, when he's ignorant or dishonest, when he's in line with social justice warriors. I do believe that their concerns usually come from a good place, but then they don't do proper research and instead just jump on the PC bandwagon and I hold them to a higher standard. Being gullible is easy. Being an idiot is easy, no matter what side you're on. Being nice is easy. Being an asshole is easy. Being critical isn't. But suddenly a scream smashes through my dream. Be fire, I smell the blood of an asylum. Hey, you, you're such a pedant. You got as much brain as a dead ass, as much imagination as a caravan sight. But I still love you, still love you, ooh, how sweet to be an idiot, how sweet.